PlayStation 5 feels like it just came out, but nonetheless the PlayStation 6 is all over the place. We even have a release date for it, not 100% of course, but there are many details pointing to a November 2027 release. And if we look at the average cycle time between Sony consoles, it is 7 years. So as we can see, if the PlayStation 5 released in 2020, I would honestly expect the PS6 to come out about 2026 to 2027. As far as the price goes, if we continue on this trend of cost increase, I would expect 599 to be the next price for the PS6. So we're at a point where not only are graphics cards getting more expensive, but consoles are closely following too. $600 for a new console isn't something I would have imagined during the PlayStation 2 era. A console that was $300 at most. Now that we got the price and the release date out of the way, which to me are the two most exciting clues of any upcoming console, let's see which upgrades we should expect on this new piece of hardware. Starting off, the whole storage problem that we have needs to stop. 2 terabytes of storage is a must for the PS6. Games these days take about 50 gigs of space on average. And when you add to that all the saving data and applications that you need, like YouTube or Netflix, it quickly starts to add up. 825 gigs is just simply not enough to keep up nowadays. 10 years ago you could have made the argument, but now it is a different time. Let's move over to the compatibility. Most specifically, backwards compatibility. This new console should be compatible with most PS1 through PS5 games. To be fair, Sony would want to make some money off of those games too. So if this was to come, you'd see games in their digital store. I don't think they would add like a disk drive that was compatible with physical PS1 through PS5 games. It'd all be digital most likely. And as far as the price goes for the games, I would say $9.99 for PS1 games, $14.99 for PS2 games, $19.99 for PS3 games, $24.99 for PS4 games, and then $29.99 for PS5 games. In my opinion, that's a good system that a lot of Sony fans would enjoy because now you can play your favorite games from any era. Not only with higher resolutions, but a better frame rate too. Think of all the PS1 games that run at 30 FPS, well now you can play those at 60 and even 120 FPS. I mean, it is a huge upgrade. Sadly, physical copies won't be compatible again because Sony knows they'll lose money that way, so expect digital games only. But honestly, even then, I think it'd be insane to play all the classics we've had since two decades ago. The most important aspect on the PlayStation 6 is going to be the performance. So we already know everybody's expecting 8K resolution on most games. And I agree. The PlayStation 5 currently runs no games at true 8K, it's all upscaled, so by the time the PS6 releases, 8K TVs would have gone down in price. Walking away from the resolution, I think 144 FPS on competitive games is a must. Call of Duty, Rainbow, and of course many more that keep coming out. And this means that console players will no longer have such a technology gap against PC users which has always been a big problem, but mostly due to the FPS difference. Lastly, we know there have been some complaints about the size of the PlayStation 5. And yeah, it is their biggest console as far as height and width. It's not really that heavy, but still many people would expect a size decrease this time around. The PlayStation 6 should be around the size of the PlayStation 3 or 4. It always seems like Sony likes to go for the smaller consoles and Microsoft much bigger so definitely expect a smaller device instead this time around when it comes to next gen obviously but as far as the design itself it will likely be very futuristic however the controller design is still a mystery because sony has done both bulky and slim designs before i would say they'll go for a slimmer design this time but i guess we'll have to wait until we see a leak or something also, there are rumors of the PS6 controller having a screen on its touchpad that you can interact with. I mean, how incredible would that be? Like, if you're playing a battle royale game for example, 
being able to see the map in your controller's touchpad, or if you're playing GTA 6 by that time, being able to see how many stars you have, and many more concepts. I mean, if this ends up happening, this is a huge upgrade, and unless Microsoft does something, they will be left behind. Regardless, this next generation is actually closer than we think, and I just wonder what will games look like when it comes.